Welcome to this week's GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike, tech, and maintenance-related questions. As always, you could submit your questions in the comments section down below using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and Sai and I will do our best to answer as many as possible within the allotted time. Okay, Doug, how long have we got? Um, as long as we like, really. Great. Uh, Ian McKenzie starts us off. I would love to hear a discussion of the physics behind why a TPU inner tube improves performance. It's easily intuitive to understand how and why a tyre will make a difference in rolling resistance, but how can the tube inside the tyre and never contacts the tarmac make a difference? Well, the concept, um, well, the technical term we need to understand is something called hysteresis. Mm. But we'll make it super simple to understand because I like simple things. Well, it, it, hysteresis is a simple concept, isn't it? Well, it's, it's the energy used to, for the sidewall and material to deform and go back. Yeah. back to its normal shape again. So the concept that this person is understanding to do with the tyre is mostly about the sidewall, and because the energy is inside the tyre and directly in contact with the sidewall, it's the, the same concept, right? Yeah, and but you're right in saying that because it is like a smaller part of the overall system, like it doesn't contribute as much to your wrong resistance, but no. nevertheless, it's still pretty significant, isn't it? Also, probably one of the cheapest ways to upgrade your bike in terms of a bit of speed or watt savings but also um, one of the least satisfying let's face yeah. it yeah and very annoying if you get a puncture You're like well i've spent all this money on expensive energy and now i've got a puncture like well, you had the other day uh, yeah alex uh, <laughs> has given me his puncture repair kit for tpu inner tubes because uh, yeah i got a flat last night and i was thinking i cannot put this in the bin like i'm i love repairing inner tubes yeah, it's such a satisfying job. It's so simple. You just think, like, <clears throat> that's one less thing to stick in the bin. Yeah, I, actually, I completely agree with and, you on And that. if that thing that you're going to stick in the bin is, like, 30 quid's worth... Definitely oh my so days, good. yeah. yeah. Uh, it'll only take me two minutes, but uh, watch this space. Okay, Joe K. Baker next. They say, I ride a gravel bike, specialised diverge, all winter long on atrocious Devon lanes covered in potholes and gravel. I want to upgrade my wheels from the stock ones. Which is better, aluminium or carbon, comma, I use 40mm tyres. Yeah. Uh, for our international audience, Devon is a beautiful county <laughs> here in England. Uh, it's very wet, it's very hilly, and it does have some gnarly little narrow roads that basically are never flat, and yeah. they alternate between 25% up and 25% down. They're making tough in Devon, don't they? And as Joe has explained, the surface is quite bad as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, if it was me... I would go for carbon because I love the look of a deep section carbon wheel so yeah. much. It makes my heart sing every time I look at my bike and I would ride it more. Yeah, I, I can't argue with that, to be they're, honest. They, they're just as strong. They can be lighter. If aerodynamics is a thing, yeah. then you can't get an aluminium wheel that's anywhere near as aero as carbon. If you've got disc brakes, which you have, you're not going to wear the rim out, so yeah. there's no problem there. <clears throat> the only slight problem is if you were ever to have a massive accident. Well, actually, no, I was going to say, like, sometimes aluminium... Well, if, if you break an aluminium wheel, it's not as bad for the planet as if you break a carbon wheel. But that's yeah. a fairly small issue, isn't it? Yeah, but I feel like if you if you got to the point of breaking a wheel, the rest of the bike's going to be in a bit of bad shape as well. Well, you're putting a lot in the bin. Uh, but actually, <laughs> yeah. if you if you shop wisely as well, there's quite a lot of carbon wheel manufacturers have got lifetime warranties against accident yeah. or damage, haven't they? So, okay. yeah, that's, uh, that's my conclusion. Right, uh, Leo or Liam, they say, Hey guys, love the show. I'm a leisure rider transitioning from gravel to road. I really enjoy using my Wahoo and comparing... My data, like time, I've spent in heart rate zones, etc. Now I'm looking at getting a power meter, but the amount of options and types out there is crazy and overwhelming. I don't want to spend loads, but I want a reliable data. Could you help me with a breakdown of the pros and cons from one side versus two side, pedal versus drivetrain versus crank arm, power meters? Well, there's a lot to unpick there. Um, where yeah, should we wh start? Well, I don't know. Well, I mean, obviously your budget is a big factor, yeah. isn't it? So that generally speaking, the less expensive power meters are single-sided, right? Yeah, there's the first thing. Now, that's great, and it gives you ballpark figures, but the trouble is that you never quite know whether you are getting your actual power <coughs> output yeah. or whether you are getting like an estimation of your power output. And so, for example, so it's only measuring one leg, basically, and then it multiplies it by two. But if you've got a leg strength discrepancy, then you're not getting your real power. Now, if you're only comparing it to your own numbers, that's not a problem. But it bothers me. Yeah, I think it bothers me too. And I also, in the past, have had single-sided power meters. 
And I've always had this thing in the back of my mind of like, am I subconsciously just pushing a little bit harder on the side? That I, know <laughs> this is bad? I don't know if anyone else has thought this was a thing, but who knows? So yeah. there's a simple difference between left and right side, cost and the fat. It's, you're not getting accurate measurement of left to right. The difference is in terms of the power meter placement, well, the pedals, understandably, they're incorporated into the pedals, which is great for a number of different reasons because you can pretty quickly and easily switch them from bike to bike, yeah. which means you haven't got to buy multiple power meters if you've got the luxury of having different bikes. Yeah. But in terms of the, um, the crank arm placement and the drivetrain, well, it's simply the strain gauges are placed within the like center of where the chain rings mount onto the crank, and then that's measuring the force that's transmitted through from left and right and do some calculations to work that out. Or it's just measuring the deflection on the crank arm each side as you push the power through it to yeah. see how much it flexes, essentially. Generally speaking, I think that if you've got a really good power meter on your pedals and a really good power meter on your like cranks slash spider, they're mm. going to work brilliantly. Yeah. The placement is less of the issue. The issue is whether or not it's a good power meter or not. Yeah, the electrical wizardry that's hidden away. Basically, yeah. yeah. And I would turn to DC Rainmaker. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of people that are super nerds into this stuff. Yeah. And we're just like mild nerds. Into that, this that, stuff. Well, yeah. as in like we don't <laughs> test products, right? Yeah. But DC Rainmaker does. So if you yeah. want to know, then he's the oracle. Oh, that's a good um, thing. Yeah. Also, right, just a nice guy as well. Is yeah. he? Yeah, nice guy. He seems like a nice guy. Um, right, over to you for the next one. Pedal-powered CJ Riss. Uh, I have a Cannondale Topstone gravel bike. I also have a Mavic all-road wheel set on the bike. I've started doing sportives, and everyone is recommending getting another wheel set, so I've got one for gravel and another for road. However, as my rear tyre is a specialised Pathfinder Pro, so basically a slick, and my front tyre is a Maxxis Rambler, so knobbly, would it not just make sense to buy a front wheel and put a slick gravel tyre on and then have one front wheel for gravel and one for road and sportives so in my head i'm thinking like oh, i couldn't do that yeah but I actually it makes, it makes a, lot, a of lot of sense yeah um if you can find <clears throat> well basically you wouldn't want uh, mismatching wheels firstly no and i mean performance wise it will make absolutely no difference at all but yeah. but there's just something about non-matching wheels that would mess with my head but if you could find yeah. a mavic <clears throat> all road front wheel yeah. then why not do it? That would make a big difference. It would get you most of the way there, although you will find that if you swap from a 40C Pathfinder Pro to like a 30C Pirelli P0 it's race... It's going to mess up your, your bike geometry a bit. Well, yeah, but you will go a lot quicker if you've got proper... Oh, right, tires, yeah, yeah, you? sorry, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm in complete agreement with you. In my head, every part of me inside is wanting to be like, no, don't do that, have matching everything and wheels and tyres, but... Like, I think it's actually quite a good suggestion. Yeah. yeah, having a Pathfinder Pro on the front as well will get you, what, 70% of the benefits yeah. of having two proper full-blown road tyres on there, yeah. basically. Um, okay. It comes down to budget, really, doesn't it, I guess? Yeah. Uh, Lewis or Tavomik, I always get... Oh, I always... Um, Get one down. What's the difference between aero socks and regular mid-calf compression socks? Well, there's a big difference here. Uh, a compression sock is purely targeting adding compression onto your calf, as this one is. An aero sock isn't about compression at all. It's about having a specially textured material and surface to try to reduce aerodynamic drag. They're like two fairly different products, although they go in a similar bit of your body. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they yeah. probably look the same to an uneducated eye. Yeah. But yeah. They, if you look closely, the fabric is completely different, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Although there is such a product now as an aero calf sleeve, so that kind of gives you a bit of both. <laughs> yeah, I know you look upset about it. I mean, I am slightly. Exist. I know who's going to use those. Yeah, Ollie's probably got a couple of sets. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, right, Not Yet Extinct has said, uh, do different tyre companies measure their tyre width differently? Oh. Yeah. I had 45mm Goodyear Explore tyres on that fitted my Zip 303 Explore wheels and measured 45mm. I've gone to Pirelli 50mm tyres and they measure up at 57 on the Explores and barely fit in the frame. Um, yeah, basically, they make a big difference. So the Explore wheels, I'm right in thinking, those are the super duper wide I ones, I want to say 32mm, something internal, it's something absolutely ridiculous. Bonkers. Yeah, yeah. So, so the Goodyears are measured 
because they were designed specifically for those rims. Yeah, 100%. And so, yeah, they take into account the fact that the rim is flipping enormous. But Pirelli's measure them up based on a 25 mil rim, which is kind of more the sort of industry standard. Yeah. And so they don't balloon, or they do balloon out more when you put them on a super wide rim. Yeah, I think, yeah, this is the thing. It's all manufacturers, or at least the bigger manufacturers, will state what internal rim width the tyre is intended for, and that's the time it will measure true to its um, written size. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. Exactly. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so when you're buying new tyres, you tend to have to just factor that in. So if you, you don't know exactly how big it's going to come up, but you know if you put a 50 mil tyre on a 30 mil wide rim, it's going to measure up a lot bigger. General rule of thumb, every two millimetres wider you go on the rim for what it's measured for, you get one millimetre extra tyre width. There you go. General rule of thumb. General rule. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, right, last question. It's from uh, Rujusna. Uh, they say, so I've heard this on GCN and other online cycling communities. And that is if you replace the bushing pulley wheel, like Shimano 105, with an Ultegra bearing pulley wheel, or better, it's a cheap, easy, and worth it upgrade. But I asked ChatGPT this, and it said the gains are so marginal, brackets like one to two watts per wheel, it's really not worth it. So I'm wondering if AI was wrong, or does it have a point? Right, I've got one first thing I want to point out here. A, like asking ChatGPT or AI in general an answer to it, it can't give you the answer. It's just regurgitating other people's answers. It can't go and to put some pulley wheels it on a bike. Hasn't done an experiment. It hasn't no, done that's it. That's true. Um, so the answer you're getting there is what other people have found out. And yes, there is a very small performance benefit going from a bushing to a bearing, but it's not going to drastically change your bike. I would never, ever, 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 ever upgrade that. <laughs> Ever? No. Well, I mean, <laughs> I didn't, it just it just doesn't even factor into my, you know, performance brain to no. replace my pulley wheels. Not unless you're going to go the whole hog and get ceramic bearing pulley wheels. And even then, like you've got to upgrade a whole bunch of yeah. other stuff. Really, haven't you? At the yeah, same we're time. we're into like tiny little details. Um, it's not really going to revolutionise yourself. I mean, if the parts are worn out on your bike and you're looking at, uh, okay, do we get a 105 one with a bushing or an Ultegra one? It's like ten pounds more. Just get the one with a bearing. It's probably going to last a bit longer. Yeah, that's, that's a, a fairly freer. good reason for it. Yeah, right? yeah. There you go. Um, so yeah, don't don't stress over it. Is the main thing. <laughs> Uh, right, that was it. That was our last question of this week's GCN Tech Clinic. I say every single week, if we didn't answer your question, well, I'm sorry, but be persistent. Put it in the comments section down below, and with any luck, we'll get to it next week. A little tip. If you write something really nice about Alex in your comment, then he's probably more likely to pick it. So if you say something like, yeah. he's got amazingly chiselled calf muscles, yeah. or his hair's Good looking eyes. particularly nice yeah. this week, that yeah. will help. Yeah, that will help a lot, actually. Yeah, yeah. thanks a lot. That's right. <laughs>